Hello Saints, I greet you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the soon coming Messiah. Today is the 2nd of April, 2019. Uh, I decided to do this video in the house because I'm by myself, so it's peaceful and quiet. Alright, um, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you this wonderful day. We give you the praise, the glory and the honor as we have gathered. Holy Spirit of the living God, feed us the bread of heaven, lest we die. Encourage us, build us up, strengthen us, anoint us that we may continue and be resolute to those things that remain that you have given us, and that we may be watchful unto the coming of the Messiah. We love you, we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, um, I read another dream again, one of many dreams of late, um, and these dreams have been you know, increasing, uh, and it's not only just me, but a lot of people that I see on YouTube. Um, the, what is interesting is the intensity in which and at which these dreams are coming. Um, mine was uh, early hours of the morning. I, it was at night, and I looked up in the sky and I saw the moon, and the moon uh, was looking very bright. But behind there was another moon, so the moon sort of separated themselves, and I could see. And I remember I uh, pointed to somebody and said, "Look in the sky, there are two moons," um, and uh, and everybody was amazed. And I remember the person who was next to me was was almost like inquisitive to say what does it mean and i remember i answered because i could hear their thoughts and i said that is the sign of the coming of the son of man and and then suddenly on the other side it shifted the scene shifted and it was day and and the sun was very bright and so i decided to take my my shades and i looked straight to the sun and lo and behold again there was another sun um and i also say the same thing to the people that were around and i was actually encouraging people to put on their glasses so that they could look. And, and, and when you did so, you could actually see that there were two suns in the sky. And I say the same thing. I said, this is the sign of the coming of the Son of Man. And no sooner had I say this, I saw people gathering somewhere together, um, and which was signifying the rapture of the church. You know, all kinds of people were coming together, etc. So um, these have been increasing. These dreams have been you know, frequently coming and not only to me, like I said, but to a lot of people. Why, uh, the question I think that we must ask ourselves, why is it uh, frequenting like this? Uh, it's because the Lord wants us to know what time it is. Luke chapter 21, verse 25 tells us that there will be signs in the sun, and there will be signs in the moon, and the seas roaring, and so on, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord. Um, and then 28 tells us that when these things begin to happen, we look up. Um, I remember, I think, on the 20th of March, somebody was shown also the moon, that there were two moons, uh, literally. I think there was a super moon, and then they actually saw that there was another moon. So all these things are happening at a frequent rate. Why? Because the Lord would have us uh, know what time it is and why uh, this is happening. It is so that we know that it is the coming of the Son of Man. We may not uh, have the exact day or the hour, but we certainly know that we are in the season, and we know that uh, without notice, he is going to come. But it's the frequency, it is the uh, rate at which, uh, and the intensity at which it is taking place, which we need to take note of, if, uh, more importantly. You see, it's not like God is playing hide and seek with us. He's not playing pick a boo, <laughs> like he's trying to uh, trick us to see if we can figure things out. Um, God wanted us to know these things before they happen. He wanted us to be prepared. You know, he's not uh, trying to be funny, uh, trying to see how much we can guess, but he makes it very clear that we need to be alert. We need to be watchful. It is an instruction, in fact. Revelation chapter 3, verse 3 says, uh, Remember, therefore, how uh, thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou wilt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And you shall not know what hour I will come upon thee. Uh, this is very interesting because it's actually instructing us to be watchful. That we must be, uh, you know, keeping an eye. We must be knowing what time it is, the time of his coming. Second Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, rather, chapter 5, from verse 4, tells us that we are not in darkness. That that day should overtake us as a thief in the night. Uh, but those that are of darkness do not know anything. Uh, so that word that says Jesus is coming like a thief in the night, let me just put this for the record. It is not for the believer. It is meant for the unbeliever. But for the believer, 
The believer must be watchful. The believer must be alert. The believer must be knowing the times and the season that uh, we are living in. So we, it has become almost a cliche and, and an ignorance to say no one knows the day, no one knows anything. We, we, we almost seem like we don't want to know, but that's not the intention of God. God would have us know. God would have us be alert and be aware. Why? Because that is his intention and that is why he gave us his mind. That is why we are prophets. Amos chapter 3 verse 7, the Lord will do nothing but reveal to his servants the prophets. So the Lord would have us to know what time it is and not to be ignorant. So the frequent thing of these visions and these dreams are indicating to us that we are so very much on the verge of the eminency of rapture. We are, we are right there. It's something that can just happen any time. For those that have been uh, you know, studying um, Bible scholars um, and the like, prophetic Bible scholars, they will tell you that uh, we are in a very, very exciting season due to the convergence or the alignments uh, of many prophetic you know, uh, statements that were uttered. And not only just the prophetic in the Bible, but we're also seeing uh, natural events taking place on the world scene. We're seeing uh, weather patterns that are also in agreement. Um, so we, we seem to have a, a completion of uh, of all things, uh, sorry, my cat is trying to <laughs> trying to mess up my video. Luna, come down, come down, come down this way. Um, so we we have a convergence of all factors together. Okay, and this is very very exciting. You know, uh, so this is indicating to us that we are in a time, we are in an hour where nothing matters except for the preparation of the coming of the Messiah. Let me say that again. Nothing in this world matters. Nothing is of importance except for the watching of the coming of the Messiah. Why do I say that? Because heaven is our eternal home. And this is all, all that we need to be about and to prepare for. Because it's very clear that this one that we've been in is coming to an end. And you and I, the child of God that is, have no reward in this realm but the one that God has prepared for us, the one that is to come, uh, is where he has kept our treasures. Uh, so whatever we are doing now, have that in mind. Know this, that. There is no dream. There is no vision. There is nothing that you, you can have in mind with this realm because it's coming to an end. But the one that is to come, the one our eternal home, is the one that God has kept for us. And his reward is with him, the Bible says, uh, and then I want to read the, the same chapter of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 8 says, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door. No man can shut it, for thou hast little strength, and thou uh, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will, let me just jump, let me go to 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So we are in a time where he's coming fast. And he says, I'm going to keep you from the hour of temptation, which is the tribulation that's coming. I'm going to keep you clearly. You have little strength, but you have kept the word of my patience. It is known as the word of his patience, the endurance. But we must watch because this is the hour. This is the message that is continuously coming, you know. So he doesn't want to come upon you like a thief. What does that mean? That means that unawares. And unawares means you are left behind. Church, let us not sleep. Let us not sleep like others do. It's not time to be ignorant. It's not time to make excuses. It's not time to worry about anything in this world. A lot of people are still worried about the things of this world. They're still concerned about the future of this world. Listen, folks, look around you. Look at the calamities that are taking place worldwide. Look at the cyclones that are happening in places that have never happened before. Death is becoming a common thing. You know, the weather patterns are, are ridiculous. The sun is hot and then it's blistering. And, and, and then when it's cold, it's really cold. And it's, when it's raining, it's really raining. We have got almost like a disorder that's, you know, that, that's at play here in the whole uh, planet. What does this mean? That means that there could be no future going forward unless and until the church of Jesus Christ is taken out of this place and God now has to rearrange everything uh, in its perfect alignment. And obviously that means judgment. Judgment is coming. Make no mistake. Judgment is coming. You cannot pray it away. But what you can do is you can pray. 
that people can open their eyes and that those that need to be saved may receive the gift of salvation because we are out of time. So the urgency of our preaching and our message is to remind us once again, it doesn't matter how many times you've heard it, but you must hear it again today because it is that serious. Imagine, uh, uh, let me put it this way in another way. Imagine uh, rapture is an, is an event that will never happen again in this magnitude. Okay, in the creation of history, it will never happen like this ever again. Do you think that the Lord would keep it a secret? Do you think that the Lord will not announce it to the world to say, you know, prepare ye the way of the Messiah for his coming? Do you not think that the Lord would blow his trumpets and send his prophets and, sorry, send his prophets and, uh, you know, and proclaim, you know, this message worldwide so that everybody should hear and, and must hear? I believe the Lord would make sure that every person would be given enough ample warning and time to prepare so that when it does happen, you will say, I was not warned. So folks, once again, we are speaking, I am speaking to you and I implore you, by the mercies of God, find and make right with God in your heart today, for the Messiah is coming. And it is going to be in a moment, with the, in the twinkling of an eye, before you even know it, it will be all over. God bless you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the soon coming Messiah. Amen. <laughs>